welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is June 4th, 1955, and the title is Jealousy. Hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> time of day. I found me a dollar, Miss Kitty, and I thought I'd run it up at Barrow this afternoon so as I'd have some real money to gamble with tonight. Oh, now that's what I call thinking ahead. Well, man's got to take a chance once in a while, else he won't never amount to nothing. Well, you got your mind made up. I won't argue with you. Hey, w- would you come stand by me? Hmm? <laughs> Maybe give me a little luck? <laughs> sure. I got a feeling it won't take long. Oh, Jack Davis is the only man playing there. We'll have plenty of room. It isn't a room you need, Chester. Hey. Hmm? Who's that dealer? I never seen him before. Uh, new man, Lonnie Pike. I don't like his looks. You never mind him. You watch the Get cards. Get your hand off them chips, Pike. You lost, didn't you? I had them on the seven. You moved them. I did not. More trouble. I told you to get your hand off them. I'm warning you, Pike. Here, now, you, you fellas can settle this without no fight. You stay out of it, mister. I'm taking these chips, Davis. Oh, no, you ain't. You better come up with a gun in your other hand. Now, draw, Davis. You ain't gonna shoot me. <laughs> Get that knife out of my hand. Get it out. Quit fumbling for your gun. I quit. I quit. Look. Pull that knife out of there, Davis. Go on, pull it. <laughs> yeah, that'll learn him. Hand. You torn up my hand. If you go for your gun again, I'll tear up more than your hand, Pike. I mean it, I'll open up your throat. Hold it, Davis. What are you busting in for, Marshal? Shoot him, Marshal. Shut up. Shoot him. You lay that knife on the table, Davis. Go on, do it. I ain't going to fight you. All right, pick it up, Chester. Yes, sir. Why didn't you shoot him, Marshal? You seen what he done to me. Now, I'll take your gun, Pike. Where is it? In my pocket there. I wasn't going to use it. I was only scaring him. It's a lie. That's right, Mr. Dillon. Pike went for his gun before Davis pulled that knife. That's no cause to pin my hand to the table. It's all tore up. It's ruined. And you're letting him get by with it, Marshal. You won't even shoot him. You'll pay for this by heaven. I'll get even with you. You can bleed to death while you're standing here talking, Pike. You better go see Doc before you do anything. I'll go. But you'll see, Marshal. You and Davis both. You'll see. This is it, L&M Filters. It stands out 
from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L and M's got everything. 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 Best flavor. L and M stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter. L and M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L and M's pure white Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L and M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. After Pike left, I got the whole story from Chester and Kitty. And although Davis had acted in self-defense, I I didn't care much for knife men. So I ran him out of town on general principles. I'd have run Pike out, too. But the next day, he left on his own accord. And that's the last I heard of him for some time. A month went by, and I forgot about the whole thing. Until the day Chester brought word that an old friend of mine, a gambler called Cam Durbin, had come to town. And he wanted to see me at the Dodge house. Durbin seemed like a real nice fellow, Mr. Dillon. His wife's nice, too. His wife? Wasn't he married when you knew him? Well, I haven't seen Cam in a long while, Chester. I think he's been over in Wichita all this time. Yes, he has. That's what it said. They come on the Santa Fe this noon. There they are, sitting in the lobby. Oh, yeah. yeah she's a pretty girl, isn't she? Yes, she, she sure is. Awful pretty. Oh, here he is, Dilly. He's Matt Dilly. Hello, Cam. <laughs> it's good to see you. Marshal Dillon, huh? Yeah, it's not much of a job, but at least they eat regular. Here, I I want you to meet my wife, Tilda. I'm glad to know you, man. Oh, it's Tilda, Marshal. How do you do? Well, you surprised to see me married, Matt? Well, a man can get married, I guess. Sure he can. If you left that gun off, maybe some woman would have you. Yeah, you used to be pretty handy with a gun yourself, Cam. I had to be. Yeah. But that's over, Matt. I've gambled honest ever since my wedding day. It's a promise I made to Tilda. It was his only fault, Marshal. Outside of being the most jealous man I ever met. Oh, now, Tilda. It's true, and you know it. Tell me, Cam, what are you doing in Dodge? Oh, I'm going to run a faro table at the Long Branch, Matt. I made a deal by mail with the owner there. Oh, Sam Noonan? Yeah. yeah. I give him a percentage, but it's my game, and I run it. I don't aim to get rich no more, Matt. Just make an honest living. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what, Chester? Look who's here. Oh. He's seen you. Yeah. Marshal, I want to talk to you. Uh, Why don't you come by the office later, Pike? I'm busy right now. You're busy, huh? Well, I ain't. Nobody will hire me. I've been all over. Look at that hand. Can't deal with that hand. They say I'm too slow. I'm starving to death, Marshal. Oh, why don't you look for some other kind of work? I want no other work. Gambling's all I know. You're a troublemaker, Pike. I don't know why I want you in Dodge anyway. Troublemaker, huh? Well, I'll make you more trouble you ever thought of if you don't help me. Get out of here, Pike. Uh, Wait a minute. I don't know what this is all about, but I'll give him a job. No, Cam. Well, I can understand why a gambler don't want to give up his trade. You a dealer, mister? I own a faro game at the Long Branch. You can deal in my off hours. You mean it? I won't stand for cheating. First time, out you go. Well, I wouldn't cheat nobody, I promise. Come in tonight, I'll talk to you then. Sure. Thank you, mister. Be there tonight. It's a 
a good thing for Marshal Dillon there's one decent man in this town. That was a mistake, Cam. You don't want him sneaking around waiting to shoot you in the back, do you? I'd have handled that. Sure, but it's easier this way. I don't care if he is a slow dealer. He can at least keep the game running. Pike's no good, Cam. He'll cause you trouble, sure. Why should he try to hurt me? Because you're a friend of mine. <laughs> you're too suspicious of people. <sighs> Maybe. Well, what could he do to me anyway? I'm clean. I only got one weakness, man. Oh? Tilda here. Cam. She's sure right about my being jealous. Well, don't get too close to Lonnie Pike. It isn't only me he doesn't like Cam. It's everybody. After a week or two passed and nothing happened, I began to think maybe Cam was right about my being too suspicious. For a while, he joked me a lot about it. And then I began to notice a change come over him. Wasn't anything I could put my finger on. But sometimes I'd find him looking at me, and when I'd look back, he'd turn away or start studying his hands. It was like he had something on his mind that he was ashamed of. I wanted to ask him about it, but I figured he'd tell me when he got ready. And he almost did one night at Delmonico's. Doc and I had finished supper and were sitting there talking when Tilda walked up. Evening, Marshal. Yeah. Doc? Well, hello, Tilda. Uh, Won't you have a chair, Tilda? Oh, thanks, Marshal. Ah. Ah. Oh, where's Cam? I'm waiting for him. He told me to meet him at 6 o'clock. Oh. Well, you can have our table. We're all through. Oh, I thought maybe you hadn't started yet. Well, Doc likes to eat early. <laughs> I guess he's afraid there won't be anything left if he isn't the first in line. <laughs> oh, anything. Oh, now, that's a lie, of course. <laughs> I eat early because I get hungry early. <laughs> Sounds like a simple enough reason. Yeah, and also because I like to go to bed early when I can, <laughs> like tonight. <laughs> so, if you'll excuse me. I'll stay with Tilda till Cam shows up, Doc. Fine, fine. Goodbye, Tilda. Bye, Doc. Hello, Pike. Hello. That's funny. Oh, what? Lonnie Pike just stood there, took a look at us, and then left. <laughs> well, Pike doesn't exactly approve of me, I'm I afraid. don't like him, Marshal. I wish Cam had never hired him. Well, he hasn't caused any trouble so far. I wouldn't trust him any further than I would a Yankee. <laughs> well, I guess you couldn't put it much stronger than that, oh. could you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, I just naturally thought you were from the South, Marshal. <laughs> well, you can't offend me, Tilda. I've lived almost everywhere. So has Cam, I swear. I get the idea sometimes he couldn't have spent more than a night in any one spot. He's been so many places. <laughs> Cam was quite a wanderer before he met you. Well, he worries me sometimes, Marshal. Oh? Why is that? Oh, I can't tell you now. What? Oh, hello, Cam. What are you doing here, Tilda? What? I said, what are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting for you. That's so? Of course it's so. What are you talking about? Well, you're supposed to be waiting for me at the Alacrain. Oh, my goodness. I guess I wasn't listening. I just naturally thought you said Delmonico's. Uh-huh. Well, Cam, now that you've found her, why don't you sit on? I'll be at the Alacrain, Tilda, when you're finished. Cam! Don't worry, Marshal. I'll explain it to him. Tilda followed Cam out the door, and I sat there watching him, and feeling pretty helpless about the whole thing. I'd seen jealousy before, and I knew what it could do to a man. But somehow, I'd never been mixed up in it personally. And I didn't like it now that I was. But I figured the only thing to do was forget it. And I did. Until the next day. It was long about dusk, and I was riding back to Dodge from a trip I had to make out to the Chatsworth place. At the edge of town, I caught up with two other riders, Kitty and Tilda. So I rode along with them. Oh, 
I'll bet we've been 20 miles this afternoon, Matt. Well, it's good for you to get out once in a while, Kitty. <laughs> good for me, too. If I had my way, I'd never go near a town. Well, why don't you make Cam buy your ranch? All that money, he's winning every night. <laughs> well, what would Cam do on a ranch? All he knows is cards and guns. Guns? I didn't think Cam ever wore a gun. Well, he doesn't anymore, Kitty. I made him stop. But he's awful good with one, just the same. Yeah, he is. I've seen him. Oh, say, I forgot. I told Ma Riley I'd stop by and say hello today. That's her house there. Uh, why don't you go on ahead with Matt, Tilda? Well, I think I will, Kitty. I'm kind of tired. I'll see you later. Sure, Kitty. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Kitty. She's a wonderful girl, Marshal. Yeah. Well, that's not the most enthusiastic response I ever heard. Uh, I'm sorry, Tilda. I, I, uh... I'm just thinking about yesterday. At, uh, Delmonico's. Oh. Cam was upset about something, Marshal. It had nothing to do with you and me. Is that so? No. That isn't so. You know it. Shames you when he acts like that, doesn't it? Yes, but he doesn't always act like that. No, of course not. Oh, look. There he is, waiting for you. And Pike. Yeah. Oh, Pike's leaving. Good. Hello, Cam. How are you, Cam? We sure had a long ride. Nearly 20 miles, Kitty said. Kitty said? Oh, well, she stopped off to see somebody up the street there. She did, huh? Why, <laughs> Cam, you don't think I've been out riding with the marshal, do you? Why shouldn't I? Well, we ran into him on the edge of town, that's all. Oh, Cam. Uh, I'll take your horse over to the stable for you, Tilda. No, you won't. I'll take it. All right, Cam. Why don't you ask Kitty if you don't believe us? She'd lie. She'd have to for her own pride. Look, Cam. I want to ask you something. Go ahead. Who's been working on you? Who's been putting all this in your head? I got my own eyes. You sure you aren't using Lonnie Pike's? Pike? Of course. That's who's been doing it. It's true, isn't it, Cam? Pike has nothing to do with this. Now you're lying. You won't admit it, will you? You're too ashamed to admit it. I don't need anybody to tell me what's plain as day. Matt? Yeah? Next time we meet, I'm going to be wearing a gun. No! No! I won't stand for this! I didn't start it, Tilda. No, Pike started it. I'm going to my room. She's right, Cam. I warned you about him. Out with my wife. I'm going to come looking for you, Matt. I'm going to kill you. Ah, you're a fool, Cam. I'll feel less like a fool when you're dead. Where'll you be, Matt? I'm easy to find. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. And L and M's got everything. Best filter. Notice the color of the miracle tip. It's white, pure white, to give you the purest and best filter. Best flavor. You get a rich, good tasting, fully satisfying smoke, and that's what every smoker wants. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos, L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Today, buy L and M. It's sweeping the country because it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, today, why don't you get L and M? Because L and M's got everything. This is it. 
L&M's filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Go on under the long branch, and I'm going to get Pike, and I'm going to make him face it out with Cam. And if he won't talk, I'll twist him till he does. Well, that's the only way to do it, I guess. Hey, wasn't that Cam's wife just went in there? Huh? No, I wasn't looking, Chester. Well, I was, and I know it was her. Now, what would she be doing in the long branch? I don't know. Come on. Look, she's gone and shot Lonnie Pike. Give me the gun, Tilda. Take it, Marshal. Why did you do this? I had to. He ain't dead, Mr. Dillon. Well, get some help and carry him over to docks, Chester. Yes, sir. Hey, a couple of you men, give me a hand here, will you? I've got to arrest you, Tilda. Of course. I shot him, didn't I? Let's go. It's Cam. He's wearing a gun. Don't you say a word to him. Let me do the talking. What happened? There's nothing to worry about, Cam. He's taking you to jail. I said there's nothing to worry (laughs) about. I need a couple of more men over here. Well, at least you'll have some company now, Tilda. Well, how's Pike doing, Mr. Dillon? Uh, Doc will let us know when he knows. And at least he isn't dead. No, Tilda. Not yet, anyway. I had to do it, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get Cam out of that cell. Bring him in here. Huh? Yes, sir. Marshal Dillon wants Cam. They hang me, Marshal. No, I told her they won't hang him. That you might be in prison a long time. It's a good thing you hit me, Matt. Yeah. I'd have killed you otherwise. I'd never have let you take Tilda to jail. She shot a man, Cam. I don't care. If he dies, she'll go to prison. Why'd you do it, Tilda? Why? Don't you know? You shouldn't have done it. You didn't have to. I figured I had to. But why? Because of you, Cam. I don't know what you mean. If you really don't know what I mean, then I shot Lonnie Pike for nothing. Isn't that so, Marshal? I think I understand, Tilda. It ain't true about you two, is it? Well, is it? I guess you'll have to answer that for yourself, Cam. Was Pike kept saying all those things. He was after me every minute. Now I think of it, every chance he got. Yeah, Pike's quite a talker. He told me you were sitting there at Delmonico's. And today, when we saw you riding up Front Street, that seemed to prove everything else he'd been saying. That'd be a poor way to court another man's wife, wouldn't it? Right out in the open like that? Yeah. Yeah, it would. Of course it would. Now, why didn't I think of that? Jealousy doesn't allow a man to think, Cam. He wouldn't have been taking you to dinner or riding out with you like that. Now, would he? It don't make sense. It don't make no sense at all. Of course it doesn't. I'm ashamed, too. 
I'm an awful fool. Being ashamed won't hurt you. Providing you remember it. Next time you start thinking that way. It's all clear to me now. I promise you, Tilda, it'll never happen again. Shooting Lonnie Pike was the only way I could bring you to your senses. You picked a mighty rough way. I'd rather go to prison than live the way we were, Cam. Matt, do you have to keep her? I have to keep her even if Pike doesn't die. But maybe the judge will understand. Guess I ought to tell you I'm sorry, Matt, about thinking what I did. There's no need, Cam. Thanks. Oh, Matt. Doc, how is he, Doc? Tell me, is he dead? No, no, he isn't dead. It looks like he isn't going to be. Oh, Cam. He's a mighty sick man, huh? You shoot pretty straight, Tilda. Never mind that, Doc. Just go on back and patch him up. Well, that's going to take a few weeks. I'll get him off as fast as you can. I think Lonnie Pike's going to be leaving Dodge as soon as he can travel. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, and Don Diamond. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio shows. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.